good day to each and every one of you. I thank you for allowing me to be part of this Catching Fire, and welcome to another phase of it. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Help us to always be mindful of all your gifts. Through the love and sacrifice of your only Son, you have shown us the true meaning of our own existence. May the example that you have given us guide us through all the days of our lives. I want to share with you my journey from the head to the heart on the Eucharist. A little over 20 years ago, I had to write after my thoughts after a class on the Eucharist. And how my beliefs have changed so dramatically in this. St. Matthew in verse 26 wrote, At the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. In a like manner, he took the cup and said, Drink of this, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant of the poured out for many to be for the forgiveness of sins. Luke chapter 24 says, So they drew near to the village which, to which they were going. He appeared to be going further. And they said, stay with us, for the evening is near. When he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. There must have been shocked silence. Had Jesus really said that the bread and the wine were his body and his blood? What did he mean? The disciples were familiar with the scripture's blood of the covenant, which referred to the establishment of the covenant between God and Israel. Was Jesus really saying that the cup was his own blood and the ratification of the new covenant? Was Jesus himself the sacrifice that would inaugurate a new age in the age of, the cho of his chosen people? It is highly fitting that Christ should have wanted to remain present in the church in this very unique way since Christ was about to take his departure from his own in, in a visible form. He wanted to give us a sacramental presence. Since he was about to offer himself on the cross to save us, he wanted us to have the memorial of the love with which he loved us to the very end, even to the giving of his life. In the Eucharist's presence, he remains mysteriously in the midst of all who loved him and gave himself up for us. And he remains under the signs that express and communicate his love. Before Christ ascended in heaven, he promised to be with us until the end of time. He has kept his promise by remaining present in the Eucharist. When the words of the consecration are spoken, Christ becomes truly present in flesh and blood. There is no greater love on earth than God for his people. Through the Eucharist, Christ unifies himself to us and strengthens the unity of his church. In receiving the Eucharist, we are privileged to participate in the life of the Blessed Trinity, foreshadowing complete eternal particip participation with the joy in heaven. The Eucharist is the center, the source, and the summit of Christian life. The graces offered by Jesus Christ have the power to transform us in the sacrifice of the Mass. Christ becomes our redemption and our strength giving us the spiritual nourishment needed to live each day as his disciples. When I receive the precious body and blood of Christ, I know that I am to live what I have just received. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Preach, and if necessary, use words. Otherwise, live as he whom you have just received. A few years after my ordination, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Rome. My very good friend, Father Ken, was studying there for his last year. On one occasion, on the first occasion of being there, we celebrated Mass in the Basilica of St. Peter. We were led to the altar closest to where St. Peter was martyred. What a special moment. My last Mass there in the Basilica was behind the main altar, where the mural of St. Peter lost sight of Jesus and began to sink into the water. St. Peter is an example for all of us to follow. Even he denied, but grew in faith. A few days after the celebration of Mass, we celebrated Mass in the catacombs. At the Epiclesis, the consecration, I felt and knew that Jesus was very present and that all of my family, in spirit, was there in that very crowded and limited space. 
the communion of saints. I saw my father and grandparents, knowing that they were very proud of me and my ordination. A few years, a few years later, a very good friend of mine passed away. It was a Lutheran funeral. They had communion, of course, and I was asked why I did not partake. You see, they do not believe in the true existence of Christ in the Eucharist. I would be sending a false message and taking that bread and that cup of juice. We do not believe the same things. Jesus said, this is my body and my blood for eternal life. At the altar, when I receive, I pray, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to eternal life. After that, I follow with the act of contrition, knowing that I have sinned in my, since my last at the elevation of the patent, I see with my eyes of faith Christ crucified. This body in Christ's hands and blood flows into the chalice. As the chalice is elevated, I see Christ offering to the woman at the well his everlasting life, the true water that flowed from his side. In closing, I would like to say this prayer and ask that when you receive the Blessed Sacrament, to train your eyes to see what I see, Christ crucified and his body held by the priest, and his blood flowing from his side and from his head into the chalice. Go and be my bread for a hungry world. Then go and take me with you. I cannot myself walk visibly among men and women. I can only speak when you allow me to use your voice. It is only through your lips and your eyes that I can show compassion toward the unfortunate and patience toward the ignorant and the weak. It is only through your words that I can give help to the needy. It is only through your pity that I can show love toward the unlovable. Only in you and with you can I walk among men and women. Only through you shall I be seen, and because of you, others will come and follow. So go and be my bread for a hungry world. Again, I thank you for being here and catching fire. And I hope that my witness will someday affect you and how you see Christ in the Eucharist. Thank you very much. God bless each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.